All right, on uh, the second debate tonight, Aparajita Sarangi, BJP Member of Parliament, uh, is on the broadcast with us. And Jyotimani Senemilai Sen uh, is a Congress Member of Parliament. Uh, Jyotimani, for the last one week, uh, uh, you know, the opposition bo in both houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, had been uh, demanding exactly this. You wanted a debate on price rise. And today, when the Finance Minister was replying to the debate on price rise, uh, Congress MPs walked out. So what purpose was served by the wasted week in which we saw disruption, no meaningful business being transacted, and of course, uh, the entire drama around the suspension and the revoking of the uh, suspension. We'll go, go across to Jyotimani in just one second. We'll try and fix that uh, audio line of hers. But Aparajita Sarangi. A very good evening. It has been a highly ridiculous performance of the opposition today in the Lok Sabha. I was sitting throughout the debate and we had expected that the opposition parties would come up with many points against the way we are handling the economy of the country. But unfortunately, a couple of people got up and no facts, no arguments, no tathya, no tark. And thereafter, people from the treasury branches started and ultimately, at the end, after very patient listening, Honorable Finance Minister, Madam Nirmala Sitharaman, started to speak. And she delivered almost more than two and a half hours of speech. And she had lots of counters, very convincing replies. And lo and behold, I okay. think about half of her speech had been over. And the Congress staged a walkout. And she actually mentioned Congress had been disturbing us all through. And this has been a particular session mm -hmm. which saw the lowest of the productivity rates. And unfortunately, when the time had come for them to listen to the reply of the government, they just staged a walkout because they did not have any kind of argument or any kind of fact to support their contention. Okay. They know what the government is saying is right. And I think they are not able to handle this particular uh, aspect. So it was very unfortunate, very uh, ridiculous, I would say, the way the opposition, especially the Congress, behaved. Mm. And, you know, for no reason they were creating a ruckus. I think all of us, most of you who were not inside the Lok Sabha, were outside, have seen. Le so let me uh, see it, if we it, can uh, go back to... It shows uh, what Jyoti the opposition is like, right, and the but... wind was out of the sails today. All right. No, so uh, as we try to patch through that line of uh, Jyotimani, Member of Parliament, who was also one of the four... Uh, Congress MPs in the Lok Sabha who was uh, suspended and the suspension got revoked today. Uh, what the finance minister said, she said three things and I want to get her response to this. Uh, number one, she said there is absolutely no chance of India going either into recession or going into stagflation. That's number one. She also cited how India has foreign exchange reserves in excess of $600 billion. So you cannot compare the situation that India is facing with, say, a Bangladesh or a Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, all are going to the IMF and asking for bailout money. Uh, Bangladesh, despite having a, 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 a pretty good growth rate. So, Jyotimani, please respond. And, and the third point that the finance minister made was that uh, the opposition keeps talking about inflation. But when the UPA was in power, for 22 months, inflation was above 9%. Please respond, ma'am. Can you please uh, brief me again in between my audio got Yeah, no, so I, I, uh, the finance I'm minister sorry. made three points today uh, in response to the price rise debate. Number one, she said there's no question of India going into recession or stagflation. Number two, she said uh, India has foreign exchange reserves to the tune of $600 billion. So it is uh, unwise to be comparing India to a Bangladesh or a Sri Lanka and the kind of economic crisis that you're seeing there. And number three... She said that as far as inflation is concerned, when UPA was in power for 22 months, inflation was above 9%. See, we, we asked some straight questions. Then everything is okay. Everything is under control. Everything is better than other parts of the world. Then why, uh, this, why the prices are rising? It's not a very normal price rise. It's unbearable bird, burden on a common man. Today I spoke in the parliament. It's when you compare to the Congress-led UPA, it's almost double. Everything, pulses, rice, oil, everything is almost double. Gas cylinder is triple time. Petrol diesel is double. Then everything is okay. Then why this burden has been on common man? Why don't government take the burden? Uh, on the one hand, government taxing the people, looting the people. For example, petrol diesel. They have looted 3,92,000 crores. Where is the money gone? 
the corporate tax cut 2020 alone 1 lakh 45000 crore why uh, adani ji has become rich, richest in the fourth largest richest in this eight years of this government why the common man is unable to bear the burden of the price rise unable to live in this country so this is what we are asking that everything is okay everything is in control why the 45 years of unemployment 45 years of unemployment uh, highest unemployment rate why are we uh, the uh, we, we, our unemployment rate is higher than sri lanka pakistan is 9.4 we are 29.3 the, the facts is not actually fitting we are we want the facts not the fiction that is why we walked out today we are uh, we, there is no fact there is no truth what finance okay. minister uh, has conveyed to the house unfortunately that is why we walked out they uh, cannot say everything is all right then common man is lying the price rise is not uh, there that um, uh, uh, diesel uh, diesel petrol is uh, below 50 rupees uh, gas uh, uh, is uh, below 200 Sarangi rupees what's respond. happening here aprajita respond See, our finance minister, as I said earlier, I repeat, she came up with all facts and figures. Now, if the Congress and other opposition parties do not want to listen to her or believe the facts and figures that she had been quoting with all conviction at her command, I think that's their problem. And there is a line in English which I would definitely like to place before you. A man or a woman convinced against his, her will is of the same opinion still. They do not want to be convinced. But the fact remains that she categorically mentioned that the inflation is 7% is or less in India. It cannot be more. It is not more. And she compared this rate with the rate of the UPA government 1 and UPA government 2. And also she compared this rate with the rates of other countries. We are much better off. And she also emphasized the fact that because of COVID, Omicron and the second wave of COVID and of course the Russia-Ukraine war situation across the world is not right. And as far as macroeconomy of the country is concerned, the foundations are so very strong that we have been able to handle the shocks of this kind of condition okay. very efficiently. And I think the, at, at this juncture, the opposition parties should come forward, try to understand and support the government. I think this is what the, gov the people of India are expecting. No. I'll just give you jo a figure. Yeah. In fact, she talked of the development expenditure. Just give me about 30 seconds. She talked of the development expenditure. Between 2014 and 2022, the development expenditure has been 90.9 lakh crore rupees, whereas this was between 2004 and 2014, only 49.02 lakh crore rupees. So this is the difference. This is one. Number two, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, they are all going to IMF begging for, you know, support. Yeah. 3.5 billion dollars, 7 billion dollars by Pakistan, whereas India is not going. So I think we have to understand the situation when the finance minister of the country stands on the floor of the house in the Lok Sabha and gives facts and figures, we are bound to no, believe it. I, I